Hello everybody, my name is Peter Klapper from the School of Biosciences at the University of Kent and in this video clip I want to discuss with you the concept of mixed reversible inhibitors. So how does a mixed reversible inhibitor work? Well, we've discussed in previous videos competitive inhibitors. So let's quickly revise that. We have an enzyme, we have our substrate, it forms an enzyme substrate complex, it gives us the enzyme plus the product. And we said for a um, competitive inhibitor, this interacts exclusively with a free enzyme. So we can write I, and I want to indicate that it is a competitive inhibitor by subscript C. So this interacts with the free enzyme and forms a reversibly an enzyme inhibitor complex. So that was our, our competitive inhibitor. And we said, so that, let's write down competitive. Now we also said we can look at an uncompetitive inhibitor and an uncompetitive inhibitor interacts exclusively with the enzyme substrate complex. It would not interact with the free enzyme. So we can write IU, that's our uncompetitive inhibitor, and it forms reversibly again and complex with the enzyme substrate complex. So it is an enzyme substrate inhibitor complex. And that is an uncompetitive inhibitor. So what is a mixed inhibitor? Well, <laughs> a mixed inhibitor is actually a compound, a single compound, let me write it like that, mixed inhibitor is a single compound, single compound, that can bind to the free enzyme and to the enzyme substrate complex. So it can bind to both. It can bind to the free enzyme and it can bind at the same time also at the enzyme substrate complex. So it combines both aspects. Let me write this down. A mixed inhibitor can bind to both the free enzyme as well as to the enzyme substrate complex. And it has the properties of both of the competitive and the uncompetitive inhibitor. So it basically works as a mixture of a competitive and an uncompetitive inhibitor. So now let's quickly look at what is the consequence. How does a mixed inhibitor influence the three enzyme parameters. So we can make a, a little table. Uh, in the first uh, column we have no inhibitor, then we have a competitive inhibitor, we, that's this one, uh, we have an uncompetitive inhibitor and we have a mixed inhibitor. Now let's have a look at Vmax. So Vmax, that is what we would get for uh, no inhibitor. With a competitive inhibitor, we said Vmax apparent, that would stay the same. With an uncompetitive inhibitor, we said Vmax apparent goes down. And all we need to do now is really to combine these two competitive and uncompetitive properties. So we have something that stays the same and something that goes down. So in this case, Vmax apparent for a mixed inhibitor would go down. Now we have Vmax over Km. Vmax over Km. And we said Vmax apparent over Km apparent for an uncompetitive inhibitor, it would go down. For, for a competitive inhibitor, for an uncompetitive inhibitor, we said Vmax apparent over Km apparent 
this would stay the same. Now, again, we put this together and we say, okay, what do we have in the case of a mixed inhibitor, Vmax apparent over Km apparent? So we put this together again. We have goes down and stays the same. So we would assume that it goes down. Okay, so Vmax apparent goes down, Vmax over Km. Uh, M apparent goes down. What happens about Km? So we said for a c competitive inhibitor, Km goes up, our affinity goes down. In the case of an uncompetitive inhibitor, Km, it goes down. Now we have up and down. So what would we expect? Well, that is now very tricky because it depends on which component is stronger. Is it the competitive component or is it the uncompetitive component? And basically we have to distinguish between three different cases. So Km apparent would go up if the competitive component is stronger than the uncompetitive component. Km up would go down if the uncompetitive component is stronger than the competitive component. And Km up would stay the same if both components are exactly the same. If the competitive component is exactly the same as the uncompetitive component. Unfortunately, unfortunately, this particular case has a special name, but let's just quickly summarize. If the competitive component is stronger than the uncompetitive, Km will go up. If the uncompetitive component is stronger than the competitive one, Km up will go down. And if both components, in the really rare case, if both components are equally strong, then Km up will stay the same. And as I said, unfortunately, this particular case, which I think is very, very rare, it's very rare that they're both the same. This is called a non-competitive inhibitor non-competitive inhibitor. So in a non-competitive inhibitor, the compound, the inhibitor would bind to the free enzyme and the enzyme substrate complex with the same affinity, if you like. It binds with the same strength. And in this case, it would not change Km apparent. So I hope this makes sense. Thank you very much for watching and I hope to see you soon.